A data center is a building full of computers, which includes thousands of servers and also storage systems, network equipment and power supplies, cooling systems and also physical security measures. And in many distributed systems, we use more than one data center to improve their reliability and speed. Let's have a look at a typical multi-data center architecture. It typically includes two data centers. One is located in US East and another one is located in US West. And this setup isn't just for redundancy. It's also providing the best possible user experience. Because in this setup, we have two data centers and users automatically connect to their nearest data center. So users in West connect to the West data center and users in East connect to the East data center. And these data centers might also have a shared storage, which allows both of them to handle full capacity if needed. And in order to direct each of these users to their closest data center, we have something called GeoDNS. You can think of this like a traffic cop, but for the internet, which directs the users to their corresponding data centers. So this is a smart DNS service and it determines the user location and after that it routes the user to the nearest data center which reduces latency significantly and it's also able to handle automatic failovers. So users first hit your load balancer and after that they are geo-routed to the nearest data center and this load balancer is also responsible for directing traffic to the working data center which means that if one of these data centers is down, let's say data center 2 is not available at the moment, this load balancer immediately updates the routing rules and it directs 100% traffic to the data center 1. And since they are sharing the same shared storage, this data center 1 is able to handle all of the traffic. And there are two main strategies to truly scale a multi-data center system. The first strategy is to do component decoupling, which means breaking down monolithic applications into microservices architecture. And this allows independent scaling of each of these components in microservices. And the other strategy is to use message queues, which allows asynchronous processing and load leveling. And we can also use event-driven architecture along with the message queues. And now let's look at some examples of how major companies implement these concepts. For example, Netflix uses the multi-region active-active setup. So in a normal state of operation, users would be geo-DNS routed to the closest AWS region with a row split of 50-50%. And whenever one of these data centers becomes unavailable, they have tools to override geo-DNS and direct all of the user's traffic to a healthy region. And another popular example is Amazon, which uses availability zones within regions. So they have these concepts of a region, which is a physical location around the world where they use the data centers. And they call each of these groups of logical data centers as an availability zone. So this availability zone for them is one or more data centers with redundant power, networking and connectivity in an AWS region. And this is why using AWS regions is more scalable than it would be from a single data center. If you'd like to learn more system design concepts like this, then be sure to check out this video next.